Hello everyone, in today's video I am going to demonstrate the latest attack which is called uh, ADCS Relay attack. Uh, behind the scene they are using the NTLM Relay and uh, using the another services called uh, MSEFSRPC which is called Patent Potent. Uh, that is actually a encrypt, uh, encrypting file systems protocol and it can be used to, uh, with other uh, you know uh, the latest vulnerability which are discovered for example print nightmare and uh, ms or prn what this vulnerability does actually this will allow the attackers to uh, leverage an ntlm relay and to get the certificate from the certificate authority in this case uh, if you uh, if you have any visibility from these guys and they have uh, these guys names are will and uh, i forgot the name another guy i apologize for that uh, they did a tremendous job will and lee and they did a tremendous job in a, you know creating this uh, certified pre-owned uh, app using active directory services and they release a white paper which has an extensive amount of information about uh, um, active directory certificate services exploitations and protections and they are going to you know release some of their defensive or sorry offensive tools because defensive i will be showing you that how you can identify the weaknesses or vulnerabilities in your pki infrastructure and here you can find a white paper as well and these tools they will be releasing in black hat and uh, i would recommend that you guys can go and join this uh, this uh, session which will be happening on 4th of August uh, in USA and these two guys are working for uh, Spectre Ops they are awesome when you're releasing in this white paper so I will be focusing on one of the vulnerability which will be ESC8 which will allow the attacker from uh, taking the NTLM relay to get the certificate from the certificate authority so here is the detail of an NTLM relay, which is actually ACS, actually ADCS supports the several HTTP based enrollment methods. I have already configured the service called Certificate Authority Web Enrollment, which allows uh, to enroll a certificate and for the users, computers, and well, it depends upon the configuration or to whom you have configured for domain controller as well. But in my lab setup, I will be abusing the domain control. So this is the detail about this information. They are specifically focusing on uh, this uh, vulnerability called the remote to find uh, printer challenge notifications. But I will be focusing on uh, the padded bottom, which actually coerce the Windows host to authenticate with other machines using uh, encrypting file systems protocol so let's try jump into the kali machine try to understand the environment which we have so we will go into the kali machine so here is uh, the ntlm relay command i'm using the packet for this now this command is talking about the tar hyphen t for target is my target and which is the primary active directory and I will be specifying SMB2 support and ADCS Active Directory Certification Services and also specifying the template. Uh, remember, the template is one of the key elements. If you oh, don't configure based on certain parameters, then uh, temp without template, it is going to give you error. So I will be focusing on a domain controller. So that's why I specified uh, uh, this domain controller template. So I started this. And uh, let's move to. Uh, I showed you uh, this uh, edit portal. So they have the exe, they have Python. So you can leverage any one of them. I will be leveraging uh, this exe file, and I will, will be. I have already installed in one of the active directory. Uh, so here is that edit portal, and this is my Kali machine IP address, and this is this uh, own machine IP address. I should configure here okay and now i will be executing this command which will be in my case target ip address and it will send this ntlm 
as uh, NTL and relay to my Kali machine. So you can see here, and this Kali machine is going to use these these hashes uh, to get the certificate. You can see the SMB. It got the connection from 139, and now it's targeting to 137. And uh, we got the login successfully. And now after the authentications, it generates this CSR. And after the CSR has successfully generated, then its CSR has been transferred to Active Directory. Especially the uh, why I'm saying Active Directory because my primary Active Directory is configured as a, a certification authority. And after that, we got the certificate here. So you can see the base 64 certificate for DC2. So I will copy this one and uh, copy this one because the last one I manually forced to stop it. I'll copy this and use another tool to 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 to, to get uh, to other certificates. So I will be moving to another system so which is called my participations. So just wait for a minute. All right, uh, now I have copied this uh, uh, DC2 uh, base 64 certificate. I will be asking for uh, TGT. I will be leveraging uh, uh, reviewers uh, for this. So just press enter for this. Let's see. I asked for the TGT and we got the TGT successfully, the ticket successfully imported. We can check it using the KList command. The tickets has been we have a couple of other tickets previously now we have a new one as well let's use the mimicats to to exclude some of the privileges and using the dc sync and the dc sync we will be targeting to krb tgt let's see we can retrieve this krb tgt using this Okay, now you can see now we got the KRB TGT using this and Terra has it here and it's Sam username KRB TGT. So this vulnerability actually uh, leads uh, attacker to gain a domain administrator credentials and more than he can attacker can persist over, over there. There are there are different ways that attacker can do. But let's try to defend this vulnerability and uh, Try to understand how we can do it. So let's uh, try to log in my Active Directory. All right, I will log into my Active Directory, and here is my CA certificate authority is configured. So you can see that revoked certificate. We don't have any the issued certificate. You can see a lot of issued certificate. We just received the TC21. And pending certificate, we don't have the failed one. You can see the lot of failed ones, even the DC2. So many failed ones are there. The certificate template, you remember that I will be, uh, I was using actually uh, domain controller templates. There are user template, computer template. These templates are published using this uh, the certificate authority. From uh, PowerShell, which uh, I I would like to show you that uh, these guys has uh, actually they uh, they release a tool called uh, I forgot the name of the tool I'm sorry for that the PKI audit something yeah here it is uh, this is called uh, uh, PSPKI audit uh, this tool I am using here to uh, to analyze what are the problems and issues we have so as per this tool if you can see uh, we identify that my certificate authority as misconfigured for e e esc8 which is the vulnerability using the ntlm relay and uh, they also identify the vulnerability certificate templates so these are the vulnerable certificate templates why these are vulnerable so if you would like to see, then you can see the misconfigurations of ESC3. Similarly, for another certificate which we have, uh, this is the same issue with the DC2 where the subordinate uh, CA is configured. So this is the information so which uh, actually uh, help from a defender perspective how you can define your environment before it getting exploited by somebody else. So that is good.
from auditor perspective as well from uh, validating the existing uh, your certificate authority if you can run this tool identify where is the issue you can fix it uh, on a priority basis let's try to understand some of the key uh, key, uh, key things which i think most of the guys most of the people those are working in a cyber security they have no idea how the certificate works we have two types of uh, keys one is called asymmetric key another one is called symmetric key asymmetric has public uh, and private two keys but i will not dig dive on these areas but i just wanted to show you that client has two keys one is called public and private key private key always remains with the client and the public key you can say is transfer over the, with the medium so the client generated the csr csr send it to the certificate authority in my case is active directory and the certificate authority looks for the certificate templates which i told you that the certificate authority are configured to validate some of the, the prerequisites in that say and the users allowed to enroll if it is allowed then enroll then if they will generate a certificate using their private key and this certificate has been transferred to, to the client uh, this is the way how this pki environment work uh, when either the client can be user can be computer can be any other uh, or smartphone or any other components which you want to integrate with it so this is the you know flow but uh, this flow can be exploited which i showed you that uh, i actually i was leveraging i i you can see the dc2 dc2 i got the credential of dc2 and the dc2 is an active directory is a secondary active directory and this credentials i am using mm, not a credential that is anti lm relay and, and that anti-LM relay is used to target to the active directory, which is 137 in my case, and the secondary is 139. So once we are targeting this service, uh, then we will try to log in using this. We got successfully logged in. Once we got uh, logged in, then we generate a CSR. So who generated the CSR? The packet utility. Uh, anti-LM relay acts, they generated the CSR, CSR was successfully generated and then sent it to the certificate authority, certificate authority, uh, you know, uh, validate and sign that certificate, our certificate using their private key and we got this certificate and now you can see page 64 certificate for the user DC2. So we got this certificate and we use this certificate uh, to actually to get some of the valuable informations from from rubius uh, we use this rubius utility to get the tgt we got the tgt and once we got the tgt then definitely we have now we can do whatever because the privilege for us is dc2 we are as a almost as a domain admin and we use the demi cards in this case and generate the, the tc sync uh, class uh, we got everything now in this case so that's something from an exploitation perspective now let's look how to defend it so from a defender perspective we will go to the active directory again and try to understand the different components here so uh, this is for the certificate authority and uh, here is the first one if you would like to disable the anti-lm then i would recommend that do it you know because anti lm is always a painful story but make sure that disabling this is always create an issue so try to validate whether any legacy components is there and if it is there then don't try to you know deny all of this uh, all of this anti lm traffic which is coming to uh, your PK environment or active directory because all under the hood app the anti-lm is the one who is responsible for this attack and also this uh, the edit bottom which is the uh, microsoft encryption services are using to exploit it so first recommendations disable anti-lm if it is not possible then look it into your is server in is server you you will go to this uh, cert srv under the cert srv we have authentications and authentications we have a couple of options here 
In advance options, you can request for extended protection. This extended protection help you to protect it against some of the attacks, but it will not give you the guarantee that it can do it. And also remove this NTLM here, and you can use uh, the covers uh, to uh, instead of NTLM. And you can bind this uh, site with uh, you know a certificate over the HTTPS rather than using port number 80 use the HTTPS and uh, that will help you to uh, you know mitigate some of these uh, these components uh, these vulnerabilities so once you have done this uh, all of these mitigations is stuffed and you are good to secure uh, your uh, infrastructure but make sure that you are not using such kind of uh, you know templates which I have intentionally misconfigured you are make sure that uh, this vulnerability, uh, this misconfiguration doesn't exit in your environment. You will also make sure that enrollment and read write access are properly assigned. If it is not, then I will recommend then to read this paper which is released by these guys. They have done a tremendous job in this case. I really appreciate their work in this direction because they have articulated each and every piece in a very uh, systematic way that everyone can understand. So take your time uh, to look into it and if you have opportunity to join them on a Black Hat uh, conference then join it and apart from this uh, I think I have covered um, the offensive side as well as defensive sides. If you have any questions related to this attacks just uh, leave in the comment sections. I will catch you in the next video. Bye take care and See you there. Thanks for watching.